Hi, my name is Richie and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today our discussion will be on measurement and errors and our attention will be on small change. Small change simply means how the measurement of one physical quantity, the error made in measuring one physical quantity will affect the other. For instance, if we make error in measuring the radius of a sphere, how it will affect the volume. This will be a very interesting engagement, so please watch the video to the end. So, before we start solving problem, let's get the necessary tools that will enable us to understand the lesson. So we say, if an error of 10% is made in measuring the, the radius of a sphere, let's see how that error will affect the volume. So remember that the volume of a sphere is giving us for third pi r cube. So now, if there is a change in the volume with respect to the radius, that means that's dv over dr. And when we differentiate this, we get 4 pi r squared. So, if a 10% error is made in measuring the radius of a sphere, that will become the percentage change in the radius. So we can say that our dr is 10% of r. So we can say our dr will be 10 over 100 r. Now, we want to see how that will affect the volume. So from chain rule, our dv, if we need dv, dv will be equal to dv over dr times dr. Look at it. The dr will divide the dr, then we have our dv back. The moment we need the percentage change in that volume, the percentage change in the volume will be the change in the volume over the actual volume 10 times 100%. Remember when we're doing absolute relational and percentage error. We say percentage error is a change in measuring the physical quantity over the actual value of the physical quantity times 100%. So, we are going to employ chain rule and our earlier discussion percentage error will be able to understand this lesson very well. So, let's take some sample problems and see how we will deal with them. So, let's look at our first problem and say an error of 2% an error of 2% was made in measuring the radius of a sphere. You should find the approximate corresponding percentage error in measuring its volume. So an error of 2% was made in measuring the radius of a sphere. You should find the approximate corresponding percentage error in measuring its volume. So we know that the volume of a sphere is for third pi r cube. So the change that will occur in the volume with respect to the radius, that's dv over dr, with, that's the differential of this, so 4 pi r squared. So if an error of 2% was made in measuring the radius of the sphere, then that's the change in radius. So dr will be 2% of r, and that will be 2 over 100 r which is equal to 0.02 R. So the change in the volume, that's dv from chain rule, will be dv over dr times dr. Look at the dr, we divide the dr, then we have the dv equal to the dv. So our dv will be equal to, dv over dr is 4 pi r squared, so we have 4 pi r squared times 0.02 r. When we solve that, we get 0.08 pi r. So, we said that, remember, we said percentage change is the absolute value of the change, uh, the actual value minus the uh, measured value over the actual value times 100%. Then we can say the percentage change in the volume will be equal to the change in the volume over the actual volume 
times 100 percent so what is the change in the volume the change in the volume is the dv which is 0.08 pi r cube over actual volume the actual volume is for 3rd pi r cube so we substitute that so for 3rd pi r cube times 100 percent so pi r cube will divide this pi r cube 0 0.08 divided by 4 third will be 0 0.06 so we can say our percentage change we we'll go to 0 0.06 times 100 percent now when we do that we calculate that we'll get six percent so if there is and when we make an error of 2% in measuring the radius of a sphere, the corresponding percentage error in measuring its volume will be 6%. So we say the corresponding percentage error in its volume will be 6%. I hope you get that. So let's look at our second question. Is it an error of 9% was made in measuring the volume of a sphere? Find the corresponding percentage error in measuring its radius. This you can try solving this so that you compare answers with mine. So we know that the volume of a sphere is for third pi r cube. So the change in the volume with respect to the radius will be equal to 4 pi r squared. That's the differential of this, which we know. A 9% error was made in measuring the volume. So we can say that the change in the volume is 9% of the volume. And that will be 9 over 100 times the volume, which is 4 third pi r cube. Our uh, dv will be 0 0.09 times 4 over 3 pi r cube. When we do it well, we solve it well, we get 0 0.12 pi r cube. So from chain rule, we know that the change in the volume, that's dv, will be dv over dr times dr. So, What's our dv? Our dv is 0 0.12 pi r cube equal to dv over dr is 4 pi r square. So 4 pi r square times our dr, which we need in this case. So to get our dr, we divide both sides. So our dr will be 0 0.12 pi r cube over 4 pi r squared. When we do that very well, we divide this, we get 0 0.03 r. The r squared will divide that one or, uh, twice of that. We will be left with one. The pi will also divide the pi. So we know our dr. So remember, the dr, that is a change in percentage, or the change in, in the radius. So the percentage change in the radius, remember, from percentage change will be the change in the radius over the actual radius times 100%. So the dr, which is 0.03r over the actual radius r, then times 100%. This arrow divide that arrow guy 0.03 times 100 percent. So the percentage change then in the radius will be equal to 3 percent. So we can say that if an error of 9 percent is made in measuring the volume of a sphere, the corresponding percentage error in measuring its radius will be 3 percent.
So our third question says that an error of 5% was made in measuring the side of a cube to find the approximate percentage error in measuring its volume. So the same approach again. We know that the volume of a cube is L cube. That's the side L times L times L. So our change in the volume with respect to the side or the length with 3 L squared. That's the differential of this. So an error of 5% was made in measuring it, uh, in measuring the side. Then we can say the change in the side, L, DL, will be 5% of L. So the DL will be 5% to be 0 0.05. Now from chain rule, we know that the change in the volume will be equal to the change in the volume with respect to the side times the change in the side. The DL will divide the DL, then we have our DV back. So our DV then is equal to the DV over DL is 3L square times the DL is 0 0.05. On solve this, our dv will be equal to 0.15 L cube. So remember, the percentage change in the volume will be equal to the change that happens in the volume over the actual volume times 100%. So the change in the volume is 0 0.15 L cube. So we can say that the percentage change is equal to 0 0.15 L cube over the actual volume and that's L cube. So over L cube times 100%. So the percentage change in the volume will be this L cube will divide us. So we have 0 0.15 times 100 percent so the percentage change that happens in the volume will be 15 percent so we can conclude that if an error of five percent is made in measuring the side of a cube the corresponding percentage change in measuring its volume will be 15 percent so let's see our four questions an error of five percent was made in measuring the radius of a cylinder, if the height of the cylinder is twice its radius, calculate the approximate percentage error in its volume. So, you know, the volume of a cylinder is giving us pi r square h. However, they say the height is twice the radius. Then we can say the volume is pi r square times 2r that we, we substitute 2r in place of h and the volume now will be 2 pi r cube then the change in the volume with respect to the radius then that's dv over dr will be equal to c pi r square so if an error of 5% was made in measuring the radius, then we can say the change in the radius will be 5% of the radius. So our dr will be 0.05r. So we can say from chain rule that the change that happens in the volume will be the change in the volume with respect to the radius times the change in the radius. So our dv then will be equal to the change in the volume with respect to the radius is 6 pi r square. You can say 6 pi r square times the change in the radius, which is 0 0.05 r. I'll multiply that 6 times that will be 0. 3 pi r cube. 
So the percentage change in the volume, that is the corresponding percentage change in the volume, will be equal to the change in the volume over the actual volume times 100%. The change in the volume is 0 0.3 pi r cube over the actual volume. Remember the actual volume is 2 pi r cube. So 2 pi r cube times 100%. The pi r cube will divide the pi r cube. Then this will be 3 over 20 times 100%. 20 will go into 100 five times. So we we'll have 3 by 5. And 3 times 5 is 15%. So we can say that if an error of 5% is made, is made in measuring the radius of a cylinder, and the height of the cylinder is twice that of the radius. Then the approximate percentage error in measuring its volume will be 15 percent. So before we look at our next question, please like my video and share it. So the next question says that the percentage error made in measuring the radius of a spherical bowl is Z percent. Find the percentage error in measuring its surface area so we have to know the surface area of a sphere so the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r square so if we differentiate the volume we we'll get surface area so get that concept so we can say the change in the surface area with respect to the radius will be e so our ds over the r will be e pi r that's the differential of the surface area with respect to the radius and they say that an error of z percent was made in measuring uh, each radius so we can say that the change in the radius will be z percent of r so the change in the radius z percent can be z over 100 r and that will be 0 0.01 z r i hope you get that this is the same as 1 over 100 z r and 1 over 100 is 0 0.01 z r so remember from chain rule the change in the surface area will be the change in the surface area with respect to the radius times the change in the radius so the change in the surface area will be equal to ds over dr which is 8 pi r times dr which is 0 0.01 z r so we'll solve that our ds will be 0 0.08 pi r square Z. Okay, so the percentage change in the surface area, remember from percentage change, will be equal to the change in the surface area over the actual surface area times 100%. So the change in the surface area that ds is 0 0.08 pi r squared z so 0 0.08 pi r square z over the actual surface area which is 4 pi r square so 4 pi r square times 100 percent so pi r square we divide this pi r square 4 divided 0 0.08, so we have 0 0.02 z times 100 percent. I'll multiply that, we'll get 2 z percent, where z is constant. 
So we can say that if an error of z percent is made in measuring the radius of a or of a sphere, then the corresponding percentage error in measuring surface area is two z percent. So we solve our last question for the day. Please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are here too. And check out my videos on relational, absolute, and percentage error on YouTube. So, say variable quantity L is directly proportional to the square of another variable T. If L increased by P percent, with P being small, we should estimate the corresponding percentage increase in T. So this is small change or percentage change involving in proportion. So a variable, the variable L is directly proportional. So we can say this is directly proportional to the square of another variable T. So we can say L is directly proportional to the square of T. And remember, anytime there is proportion, there is a constant of that variation so we can say l is equal to k t, t square where k is a constant of variation so we can find the change in l with respect to t that will be 2 k t so if an error of p percent was made in measuring the l then we can say the change in the l will be p percent of l the change in the l that will be p over 100 times l which will be equal to 0 0.01 p l so the l we know the L, we know L to be kt squared, so we substitute. So there's 0 0.01p times kt squared. That in place of L, I substitute kt squared. So we can say that the L will be 0.01pkt squared. So, remember from Cheru, we said that the change in the in L will be the change in L with respect to the change in T times the change in T. Then the T will divide the T. You have the L back. So our the L, we know our the L. The DL is 0.01 pkt squared. So 0.01 p k t squared is equal to the change in the l with respect to t is 2 k t so 2 k t times the change in the t which we are finding so you can say our dt one divided both side by 2 k t dt will be 0 0.01 p k t squared over 2 k t so our dt, see the k will divide the k, the t will divide the t. 0 0.01 divided by 2 will be 0 0.005 t. The t will divide one of these t. t then our p. So we can say the percentage change in t will be equal to the change in t over the actual t times 100 percent so the dt is 0 0.005 tp so we can say 0 0.005 tp all over t times 100 percent 
and we'll do that this two divide that to you have 0 0.005 p that is 100 percent and that will be 0 0.5 p percent or 0 0.5 is the same as half so that will be half p percent so we can say if a variable L is directly proportional to the square of a variable T and there is an, uh, an uh, a P percentage increase in the in L, then the corresponding percentage increase in T will be half P percent. I hope you get that. We'll end it here today. Please, before you log out, remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until we meet again, God bless us all.